and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Overwhelm Smash, our last meme tier deck of the week. We spent Monday and Tuesday doing some meme tier decks. This one's going to be pretty sweet. We are going to, going to be just putting some big heavy hitters out there and smashing with Overwhelm units. We got our Ruthless Raider, Iron Ballista, Wolf Rider ramping us also with the Overwhelm. And then boom, Scar Maiden Reaver with that re Regenerate. Um, Armored Tusk Rider. Um, this is a card I need to play more of, Armored Tusk, Tusk Rider. This is a pretty sweet card. I've, for a few weeks now, I've thought about, like, I just haven't done it yet, but I, like, whenever I remember, I'm like, oh yeah, I need to make a deck with Tusk Rider and Vulnerable, right? Just play, like, some Bilgewater Vulnerable stuff and then Tusk Rider to mow them down. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, but anyway, then we got Darius and Sejuani, two uh, big six drops. So even with that, so we got eight awesome six drops here, all with Overwhelm hit real hard. Um, and then uh, Leviathan, we don't even need don't even need no Swain. We're just playing this in because this is a big Overwhelm, and it also does a lot of damage to them. Pretty sweet card, helps out our Sejuani um, level up also. Uh, and Tusk Raider, let's make these Overwhelm things bigger. So bunch of beef in here some grade a beef we're gonna be smashing here this is overwhelm smash all right we're gonna go play over in normal we're gonna go play five games and let's see how it see uh what happens yeah tusk rider with frostbite also works very well but you don't really get like the you know like it doesn't work any different from anything else with with frostbite um Alright, I'm gonna mulligan six drops. I'm just gonna keep Hearthguard. I like Hearthguard. Cool. Unfortunately, we don't have the attack token turn four. Yeah, Grenadier is great. You know, die, get get some extra damage on there. Maybe we can have a Grenadier die on turn four, and that would that's what will ramp a Wolf Rider, maybe. Um, let's just play it. I'm kind of guessing the 3-3 three, three Poro. Yep. The winter's claw That's what I was guessing was the 3-3 three, three Poro. And then in that case, you know, they could have that and Poro snacks. So that would make it a 4-4. Four, four. And basically, I just didn't... You know, I could have done both of these pre-combat, which we would have dealt one extra damage, but then it would have killed one of these. I didn't want to do that because I want to be able to block with the Legion Grenadier on this turn, have it die, have them take a damage, and then I go Wolf Rider. Uh, I mean, that's my plan, but they are going to attack, right? If I just pass, that could be really bad for us if I just pass. I don't think I could just pass. Because if they just don't attack, you know, like if they just pass back, I just waste my mana. Explosives. Okay. Death doesn't scare me. I'll take everything. So assuming Poro snacks. Um this dies neither of those can block profitably they'll have a, th a three you know this will have three health um the other thing will have one health so now i can attack right away with these two Run while you can. 
So I want to Wolf Rider to ramp. But obviously it's best to get the hearth cards in as early as possible. I guess I don't really need the ramp. We should just get these hearth cards in. Just didn't work out with Wolf Rider. Oh yeah, we still have Omen Hawk. Oh, this is going to be messy. These Poros are going to be getting big also. Tremble before the winter's claw. Big Poros. Courage, soldier. All right, so I'm pretty sure I could just attack pretty Set safely with the Scar Maiden Reaver. Don't really want to just throw hearth card in front of these things that are already pumped up. The regenerate on Scar Maid Reaver. Pretty key right there. Yeah, this is the battle of huge stats. This is definitely the perfect. Perfect, like, game for normal, right? Like, normal mode. Um, why play Leviathan without Swain instead of Captain Farron? I don't know, that's a good question. I guess you, you just don't need to spend any more mana for Leviathan to be doing that damage. Um, I guess. Eh, I don't know, Cap Captain Farron seems like it'd be pretty good, too. So, yeah. It, I probably should be doing Tusk Raider. I don't get to... I don't get to double all the the power and health of all the allies, and so I'm sad, but it's it's the better play if play that, have Sejuani for this next turn. And try to kill them with that. Not the best to attack with these five fives, honestly. I'm glad I didn't. Because the Sejuani is about to level up, and so like maybe we can kind of help Frostbite stuff after this anyway. Fight like the animal you are. But this should also work out. Sejuani, pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, they played four Poro Snacks and had another Poro Snack in hand. <laughs> they snacking over there. They sure are snacking. Alright, that was a good, a good smash around there for the first one. That, that's a good deck. Overwhelm Smash. That's a good deck. Let's keep City Breaker. 
no champions. I could see this going, like, with these two regions, you can you can honestly see this going either way. Like, I think I've seen, like, no champions with this with being, like, um, the Undying and... Usually, usually when you have no champions with the Shadow Isles, it's the Undying. And they could have that and, like, the O3. The O3 and the 2-4, you know, like, the things that drain whenever things die and go real wide. But then I've also seen this with just, like, basically Karina control but not using champions. Yeah, Phantom Prankster. Um, you know, Karina controlled, not using champions. Um, I've certainly seen that too. And so really which way this deck's gonna go, I wasn't wasn't too sure. There it is. And so kept City Breaker. Gotcha. Maybe we won't use City Breaker too much. So we can combine Marksman and Death's Hand together to take down a Phantom Prankster. For um, otherwise, I could just play City Breaker. And then go straight into the five drops and six drops. City Breaker helps Sejuani a bunch. Yeah, so this is just going to be like a burn deck. I, I should probably just kill this thing. So yeah, with these two regions, with no champions, I've played against control and aggro. Our strength is yours. Want to get that thing in right away? Yeah, the Undying's a fun card to play. This is our homeland. And yeah, lots of different ways you can play that card. That's a, that's a fun one. It does seem like people, if they play the Undying, they just don't play champions ever. I feel like you can play champions with the Undying still. Yeah, the Sheriff Sheriff Undying is pretty cool. We played that a couple... Played that a few times. I think maybe just twice. I like that version, though, with Vulnerable with the Undying. That's cool. Um... So probably Sejuani. I'm going to go Scar Maiden Reaver and pair it with Omen Hawk. Instead, don't get to play Scar Main Reaver that often. And Scar Main Reaver was awesome last game. Stay out of my way. No real reason to attack with these two, they just get blocked. I guess the reason would be is if they have Phantom Prankster, doesn't let these things die. Or if they have the two for the drains. Only no, Darius! Should there be more, like, Avros and Hearthguard, Omenhawk, Darius decks? Just in general? I mean, look at this thing. A 12-8 Overwhelm? Like, what, are you, what are you supposed to do against a 12-8 Overwhelm? Yeah, Scar Maiden is amazing with buffs, too. Definitely. And yes, City Breaker might have been better just to get City Breaker in play, but... Come on, I want to play the Starius. I wasn't strong enough. All right, Sejuani's definitely better here also, but come on. 8-7 Armored Tusk Rider. Let's go. Tusk Rider, get him. <laughs> I 
Oh, those things are so big, so much overwhelm. Alright, two and oh. Yeah, that's true. Like with that's a good point. With with Will of Ionia being nerfed and, and basically just Ionia as a region being nerfed, and so people just don't play Ionia or Will of Ionia. Maybe that's a good time just to be playing huge overwhelm units like this. This could be a pretty good strategy. You know, maybe like clean up I'm not sure if like this list is, is perfect, you know, or you know, like maybe clean up like the early game and everything, like the beginning parts of the curve, but um just the the strategy. Seems pretty solid. Alright, so control deck, Twisted Fate Gangplank. Control deck-ish. I... Explosives primed. So in place. I don't know. I probably just over... I just overrate City Breaker, I'll admit. I just like to play City Breaker. It's fun. Fight or die. I need just a moment. Okay, maybe not control deck. In position. You're mine. Let the flames take you. Treasures of the ages are price. Cool. There's plenty of killing there. Not cool. Um, so Grenadier and Shared Spoils or City Breaker? That's pretty awesome. Fresh tracks. Gotcha. Now the marksman will stay alive, but now that thing will die. Alright, cool, that thing's dead. Rider would ramp. You best hope they'll do, mate. All right, I'm in there. Smell that ramp it up with Wolf Rider. Oh, come on. Wow, what a hit! What a card. Man, what a perfect card to grab with that black market merchant. Moving into sight. City Breaker is pretty good at, like, City Breaker is at the best against control, honestly. Today we fight as one. That's honestly where City Breaker is the best at. Definitely does a good job turning on Tusk Raider. My selection speaks for itself. This land is ours. Man, they are doing these black market merchants are great. Crushing it with black market merchants. 
I, I want them to go straight to combat. Oh, see, I don't want them to play something else, because now i got to play something. Because I wanted just to, to block here, turn on Tusk Raider. Um, I think I need the 7-6 to block King Clank, though. Like, this is a lot of overwhelm over here. This game would be a lot different if they didn't have that caught in the cold. This game would be a lot different. I just need to not worry about doubling the health and power of allies and just play an 8 8. Yes. The strong will have the spoils. Should just play an 8 8. Never lost a fair game. Something for all of you. I am reborn of salt and pride. Black Market Merchant was MVP of this game. <laughs> yeah, it was MVP of this game. Here, then, that's a good draw. Scum. You own what you take. We own all we see. They'll be blood in the water. Prepare the barrage. So this is doing th three damage to me with these. I can play Fury of the North basically to gain two life. That thing would still die. I would gain two life. So I would go to four instead of two. Um, so right now we're going down to one. Warring shot kills me if I don't Fury the North. Definitely don't have a Warring shot because they would have played that instead of Parlay. They do have. They will put out a vulnerable keg. Explosive. 
Okay. That was a perfect draw. That was a perfect draw. I mean, obviously, if they have a direct damage thing, I lose. But if they don't, I can. I got all three of these Overwhelms and a Fury of the North. Deal me in. No. I have a direct damage thing. I, I put my. I think I put myself in a good position to win that. I think it was okay not to play the Fury of the North to gain two life. They had a really good quality hand with, you know, all those, you know, multiple uh, champions. The three black market merchants were all really good. Especially the, the first one was insane. The second one was very good. And the third one was good. They had to have a lot go right for them. Yeah, so I think I think playing the Fury to gain the two life probably would have meant that I, I would you know like I, w I don't think I was going to be able to kill them the next turn. So like we we're definitely going to give them another attack, and so not playing the Fury forced them to have a direct damage card out of those last couple of cards, which isn't super likely. Um, I thought it was a better chance than than not they didn't have one, but you know they they had one. Uh. I'm not going to attack having Marksman Death's Hand. A foray into the field? How exciting. Putting study into practice. No, the third one took um took shared spoils. Ready. My right hand. It was really the first one taking the cod in the cold was the thing that there's a scent in the air. really turned the game into their favor. That was devastating. Because it was like one man they they played that with gang plank for one mana. Um it's a turn five that had both of those killed my five killed my five four for one mana. That's you know, with a, a free card, you know, basically, so it didn't even take a card, and it only took one mana to kill my 5-4 and keep their gangplank alive. That was... Alright, don't get to do anything with shared spoils, but Jinx is quite good. Jinx is worth two cards to get rid of. Hoping for Avaros and Hearthguard this turn. We play in bilge rules, son. Oh yeah, they might have drawn the the twisted. Yeah, they might have just drawn that twisted fate with the shared spoils. I don't know. Spin, spin, spin. You win. I don't know. Just you and me, fish bones. our first poor hand. All the rest of our hands were very good. The other three games. So giving them the opportunity to Level up Jinx. 
possible. I mean, it's possible that's the third Jinx in hand. I hope not. That doesn't. Why would they even? I mean, I guess they just want to do some damage on the Sejuani. I guess. In more sense to make something else a four-four, but. So two Jinxes are dead. Even though Jinx is leveled up, it's not likely that they're going to find the third one. Caught in the Cold is pretty cool with all these overwhelms, right? Like, you know, you just caught in the cold something small, overwhelm for a bunch of damage when you need a bunch of damage. Oh, never mind. I should have said it's a hundred percent likely that it will draw the other Jinx. So yeah, we'll go with the Leviathan where it will just do damage at the beginning of the turn. Turn on Tusk Raider. Uh, well, looks like third Jinx may take us down. Really, the only card that I was even scared of whatsoever was Jinx. Really nothing else to be scared of. Um. So this is 16 Overwhelm. They can block with what? Four, five, six, seven, eight. They can block with eight. Battle stations. Now I've lost my place. Wait a minute. They're gonna block with four. That would kill them. They'll kill him. And I, I don't imagine they have another Mystic Shot, right? Because if they had two, they would just double Mystic Shot me. Okay, so that will keep them alive. Right? Or not? Maybe not. Okay, yes. Oh, no! I was gonna... Oh, no! I was gonna say that I'd still have... Oh, no! I forgot I don't have the Decimate post-combat because Darius died. Oh no. Hold it, partner. Huh. Oh man. This is bad news. I know, so close. And no, I should not have cast... If I would have cast Decimate pre-combat, they would have just gone gold card. My axe is ready. A game. Go on, then. Watch the ball, folks. Yeah. They get that to kill me. Wait, did they not? Oh, they didn't have the mana to play it? They didn't have the one mana required? Victory! Oh, wow, that was close. What are they? Wait. They just, they didn't have the mana? So they could have just gone twist, they could have just gone blue card with Twisted Fate and, oh no, because if they go blue card, they draw another card. But still, gold card didn't do it. They knew the cards in hand, they just, you gotta go. You gotta go blue card and just see what you draw. Maybe you draw like a 
a rummage that gets rid of those and then you get the thing or something. But yeah, that's why you have Leviathan. No. Uh, this does not look good. That was a good game. Chat's loving that game. Yeah, that was a, that was a great game. Great back and forth. I was super sad when they got the third Jinx. Um, but yeah, these overwhelm things just hit so hard. City Breaker. The weakness of City Breaker is challengers. And that's probably what my opponent's going to be doing here, having a bunch of challengers. All right, so obviously Marksman doesn't kill anything right now, but still it's better to play the Legion Grenadier so we have the three spell mana that we can just have with the Noxion Fervor kind of set aside. The balance requires a watchful eye. Um, okay. Okay. Enforced equilibrium. Hmm. Death doesn't scare me. Just gonna get that Shen down to one health. That seems like a good spot for Shen to be. Get him, City Breaker. Yeah. Nothing Add it up. Me and my mark. It all adds up. Man, this would be a good time to play Marksman. Maybe I'm just dumb not playing Marksman. I'm just. Too enthralled with City Breaker. Scouting ahead. Man, I just want to play these six drops. I should have just played Marksman last turn instead of the City Breaker. So they can they can go like Warshafts, pump up Valor to kill this. Yeah, maybe we just go this route and then have Noxion Fervor Frostbite. Like if something bad happens. Right, they they play something that like something bad happens. I can go Noxion Fervor, fro you know, deal three damage to them, Frostbite. You're covered. Duty, selflessness, heavy burdens. It must be done. Feel the sizzle. Honor, guide me. Eat up, friend. Leave no survivors. Hmm. It's really easy to kill Omen Hawk if I try Omen Hawk. Also, just let this happen. 
That is one City Breaker dying. That's fine. A City Breaker can die. They do get they do get another pump with Shen of plus three. Darius. Alright, I don't think their hand was very good. <laughs> it just... So I'll tell you, I don't like Relentless Pursuit as a card. Like, what? Relentless Pursuit, like, they, they need cards that do stuff, not Relentless Pursuit. That's far enough. Yeah, they're just showing that those are like the last cards in hand, I guess. They're like... I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't I don't really play Rolands Pursuit in any Demacia deck. Anyway, this deck was really cool, and honestly, it's a good idea. I You know, I liked Daria Sejuani. We saw there that last game how City Breaker just leveled up our Sejuani super fast, and it was, it was honestly really, you know, that was a, a good card to have. But Tusk Rider, Reaver... Get like these things in with a bunch of uh, pump for them. I like it. That could actually be pretty good right now. Just playing huge units with lots of overwhelm and pump. Um, and even like the one caught in the cold looked kind of cool too. I think with this deck, I would prefer to like, I would want to clean up the first, the uh, cards that cost one through four. You know, like we're playing a big wide variety of them. I think I would like Saboteur was just fine, but I think I'd want more, like maybe get another. I don't know, let's see. So maybe if we go a third Saboteur, third Omen Hawk, third Grenadier. I love all those cards. Probably just no shared spoils. Um, let's see. Um, probably just supposed to play one City Breaker. Maybe not Wolf Rider. Okay, maybe just two Saboteur. Let's see. Um... Yeah, we have we have the two Tusk Raiders in here. Um, those were pretty good finishers. What did I want that we didn't have? Grenadier is great. I want another one of those, but um, oh, Trapper. I don't know. The Marksman didn't look bad, but Marksman's pretty like the one health is pretty awkward at times and it's definitely really awkward with like the ember maiden but also kind of paired with the ember maiden did feel like we should be playing just avaros and trapper trapper is a great great card and it'll help us with an expensive curve like this it's nice having one mana five five so you can double spell with expensive cards you know like turn six you can play a six drop turn seven you can play another six drop and play a five five um you know, like you can you could double spell like that. So the honestly, the Ember Maiden and Marksman should probably just be trappers. That's how that should probably go.
and not sure if Ruthless Raider is actually better than Sentry. Like, maybe not. Like, maybe Sentry is better, getting getting a little bit of card draw. Obviously, this is another Overwhelm unit. I'd, I'd probably just keep it as Raider for now, but that's, that's something to keep an eye out on. Um, yeah, I'm not sure with Farron or Leviathan. It is nice being able to just spend your 8 mana on Leviathan and then not spend mana on anything else, but... You know, this does attack for a lot more, and those decimates could be really good. I'm not sure. Leviathan works better with Sejuani, and just work, it works really nice to just not have to spend mana, and then it's just, you know, it's basically round start cast decimate, right? Like, deal one three times. Like, it's one less damage than Decimate. But it's basically round start, spend zero mana, you know, cast zero mana Decimate each time. So you can still use your mana for other things. Um, yeah, there was just one Fury of the North. We have the Sejuani's for Fury of the Norths. I could see more of that. I wonder if, like, Wolf, Wolf Rider was kind of hard to activate. I wonder if you'd rather have Babbling Bjerg, but Wolf Rider again was overwhelmed. Like the 4 3, especially whenever you Omen Hawked it, like to 5 4 was really nice. Um, but Bjerg could be another option to kind of just keep, keep those cards coming. Yeah, then Leviathan's also 3 less power. I don't know. I, I would not say that... I'm not going to say that Leviathan's better than Captain Farron. It's kind of tough to say that. But I also like not having to spend more mana. But... Yeah, y'all are right. Probably Captain Farron. Probably Captain Farron. Uh, should this deck have like a reckoning in it? Nah, nah. You just overwhelm over everything anyway. That'll just help. That would just make you lose games like that. You don't have that turned on. Um. So yeah, maybe something like this, and then the spells. There's so many different spells you can play. You know, we had one for you know, like we had just some. Don't have very many spells in this deck. I could see, I could see fitting in some more spells somehow. But, I don't know. Maybe not. Yeah. So, I think I think I would try this. I think I would... Uh, yeah. Replace Leviathan with Farron. And then kind of clean up the 1 and 2 mana cards. Get another Legion Grenadier. Get another Omen Hawk. Omen Hawk in particular is just absolutely amazing. Like, it should be a, a 3 of in this deck. Um, but, yeah get change those up and then also change up the three mana slot with playing Averroes and Trapper over the other stuff. But there we go. That's Overwhelm Smash. Uh, yeah, and I think Trapper would work out. It's not like our three drops weren't bad, though. And the 5-5 five five doesn't have Overwhelm that you get with Trapper, but I still think that even with that stuff considered, I still think that that's worth it. But uh, the Ember Maiden was good the one game we had it. Marksman did some good stuff. So those cards weren't bad. Um, uh, but anyway, there we go. That's Overwhelm Smash. Those of y'all watching on YouTube, hit that like button over there. Feel free to leave those comments. Let me know what you think of like just like the playing with the different numbers. Give this deck a try. Maybe try the original version. Try this version. Let me know which one you like more. Um, you know, like the the deck list will be the original version, the one that we played um, that you'll that you could copy paste from if you want to use this one. You just have to make those manual changes. Um, but yeah, use them use them both. Let me know what you like more and just just overall. Let me know what you think of Overwhelm in this meta game with like less Will of Ionia removal. Like, all the removal spells just do a little bit of damage. There's less, like, like hard removal spells. And maybe just really big Overwhelm stuff could be really well positioned. Scarmain Reaver, Tusk Rider, this kind of stuff. That's what it feels like. So, pretty strong deck here. Um, <laughs> strong, you know. 
get it. All right. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.